The human heart in conflict with itself alone can make good writing because only that is worth writing about, worth the agony and the sweat. This quote from the Nobel Prize writer William Faulkner is at the core of The Light Between Oceans by M. L. Stedman, where the grace marks, they are unviolet, are pivotal characters whose lives are shaped by the themes of family, loss, and the struggle between personal desire and societal norms. We will focus on the characters and the characterization of the grace marks. But many of you are probably wondering what is characterization. Characterization is the method by which an author conveys the personality and motives of a character. Stedman uses both direct and indirect characterization to portray the grace marks, revealing their values, emotions, and the societal norms they represent. Throughout the novel, the grace marks serves as a moral compass, embodying the societal norms and expectations and the emotional complexities faced by the protagonists, Tom and Isabel Sherbert. This leads us to the central question. How does Evan Stedman in The Light Between Oceans, through the characterization of the Grace Marks, make them embody opposing forces for the Sherbans? To answer this, we will examine how Stedman creates the Grace Marks to portray their personalities and the tensions they embody. Our analysis will unfold in three parts. First, their initial, initial introduction and characterization, Second, their symbolic role, and third, the moral conflict that defines them. From the beginning, Stedman presents the grace marks with vivid imagery and dialogue that set the tone for the characters. In chapter 2, during a social gathering, their grace marks is described as a solid man with grey whiskers, while Violet is sturdy and flushed. The imagery here conveys a lot about their personalities. Bill's solid nature suggests rel reliability and perhaps a rigidity hinting at his later role as a voice of societal order and moral viewpoint. The phrase grey whiskers, composed of an adjective and a noun, add a sense of age and wisdom, but also suggest a traditional mindset. Violet description as sturdy and flushed implies physical robustness, which, which later translates into emotional strength, particularly in her maternal role. The adjective flushed evokes warmth and vitality indicating her involvement in family life and her capacity for deep emotion. Furthermore, Stedman uses dialogue to further reveal the Grace Marks characters. In his first interaction with Tom, Bill directly questions him. So you think you're up to Jane is done? This phrase is a rhetorical question which serves two purposes. It challenges Tom's readiness and simply implies Bill's skepticism. The phrase up to suggests that living on Jane is, is a test of character, one that Bill feels not everyone can pass. This dialogue characterizes Bill as someone who values resilience and adherence to traditional values, foreshadowing his later struggle to accept the choice Isabel and Tom made. Bill becomes a figure who represents the external pressures of societal expectations. Also, Violet's pragmatic nature is conveyed through dialogue. When Bill questions Tom and Isabel's relationship, Violet responds with, Life's a short thing, she's a sensible girl, and she knows her own mind. The phrase, life's a short thing, is an example of understatement, reflecting Violet's understanding of life's fragility. It hints at her later, at her own experience with loss and sets the stage for her empathy and emotional depth, which becomes more apparent as the story unfolds. Violet's flexibility contrasts with Bill's rigidity, marking the beginning of their characterization as opposing forces of tradition and pragmatism. Having laid the foundation for their personalities, we will now explore how the grace marks go beyond their personal qualities to become symbols of broader societal expectations and emotional depth. Their interactions with Lucy, Tom and Isabel reveal the dynamic between societal expectations and personal emotions, bringing to light the tension that defines the characters. The grace marks characterization evolves as their interactions with Lucy and the Sherbans develop, particularly regarding Lucy. Upon meeting Lucy, Violet is overcome with emotion. Her mother wept and smiled and laughed all at the same time. At last, the use of the lexicon of emotion with the three verbs wept, smiled and laughed conveys the, deep, the, the depth of Violet's response, showing the reader the instant of her longing for family. This imagery captures the experience of joy and sorrow all at the same time, reflecting Violet's complex emotions as, as she, she, she's Lucy not just as a granddaughter, but as a symbol of hope amidst as grief. The loss of a son's dream. Similarly, war. Bill's emotional depth is revealed during Christmas lunch, where he says grace in a choked voice 
and thanks the Lord for Lucy. The auditory imagery of a child's voice conveys his deep-seated emotions, suggesting that his gratitude is mixed with unspoken grief over the sons he has lost. This moment adds a layer to Bill's character, demonstrating that beneath his stern exterior lies a man who has been deeply affected by loss. This portrayal creates empathy from the reader and illustrates how Lucy has become a beacon of hope for both Bill and Violet. Additionally, Violet's desire for familial connection is further emphasized through her actions. She insists on capturing a family photograph declaring three generations of Grace Mark women. This line uses metaphor to symbolize the continuity and legacy of the family. However, it also introduces dramatic irony as the reader is aware of Lucy's situation. The metaphor serves a dual purpose. It reveals Violet's desire to preserve her family's legacy while also highlighting the tragic reality of their situation. This tension evokes sympathy from the reader and underscores the themes of loss and the human need for connection as opposed to the isolation on Jane's role. While the grace marks are initially presented as symbols of societal expectations and emotional depth, the, re the revelation of Lucy's origin forces them into a moral conflict that challenges the values and beliefs. The more conflict surrounding Lucy's true identity intensifies the characterization of the grace marks. Violet's internal struggle is expressed through a dialogue with Bill. We live with the decisions we make, Bill. That's what bravery is. Standing by the consequences of your mistakes. Here, statement employs an aphorism to convey Violet's pragmatic outlook on life. By defining bravery as standing by the consequences, Violet reveals her belief in personal responsibility. This line emphasizes her internal conflict as she deals with the moral implications of Isabel's action and her whole role as a mother was faceless. Imagery plays a, sin a significant role in depicting Violet's emotional turmoil. She is described as peeling potatoes over the sink as the sunset turned the garden from green to old or done. The transition from green to old or done serves as a metaphor for Violet's fading hope and the sadness in her life. The contrast between the mundane act of peeling potatoes and the profoundness of her emotional state highlights how Violet's everyday life is, is filled with grief. This imagery deepens the reader's understanding of her character as one who silently enjoys her sorrow while striving to maintain a sense of normality. Likewise, Bill's characterization is also enriched by his response to the events. At the police station, he confronts the authorities with I demand you release my son-in-law right this minute. The use of imperative with the verb demand brings out Bill's authoritarian nature and his struggle to maintain control over a situation that defies his moral compass. His response reveals his protective instinct towards his family and his inability to reconcile the situation with his established beliefs. This moment adds complexity to Bill's character, portraying him as a man whose moral values are tested by his love for his daughter and thought to be granddaughter. Besides, Violet, in a conversation with Tom, refers to Lucy as having given her Bill a new lease of life like a magic tonic. This metaphor compares Lucy to a remedy that revitalizes Bill, illustrating the profound impact she has on him. The use of magic tonic suggests that Lucy has brought an almost miraculous transformation to Bill's life, temporarily easing the pain of past losses. This metaphor not only reveals the depth of the Grace Mark's emotional investment in Lucy, but also emphasizes the fragility of the hope she represents. To conclude, through the characterization of Bill and Violet Grace Mark in The Light Between Oceans, Emil Stedman explored the opposing forces that challenged the Sherbans. Stedman reveals the Grace Marks as embodiments of societal norms, personal loss, and moral ambiguity. Their initial portrayal as solid traditional figures contrast with the isolated and morally complex world of Tom and Isabel on Janus Rock. As the Grace Marks' moral conflict intensifies, their internal struggles reflect the broader themes of the novel. Instead, man shows how individuals deal with ethical dilemmas that blur the lines between right and wrong, making the Grace Marks central to the novel's exploration of morality, love, and loss. Ultimately, the Grace Marks embody the tension between societal expectations and personal desire, forcing readers to reflect on the complexities of moral decision-making in their own lives.